Welcome viewers to the Saturday, November 16th edition of To It For News. I am Jaco Wooding, bringing you our top stories from this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Heavy rainfall over a period of several hours led to severe flooding across low-lying areas of Tortola and Virgin Gorda on Monday, leaving many roads impassable, damaging vehicles, and prompting authorities to issue urgent warnings to residents. The Department of Disaster Management estimated about five inches of rain fell that day, over three of which fell during a period of just four hours in the wee hours of the morning. To it for media caught up with legislators following the flooding, including at-large representative Honorable Lorna Smith, OBE, who provided a summary of the damage based on her assessment. First time I am here on Fleming Street, and I am nothing short of embarrassed that every time it's the same complaint, the fact that flood drains are not cleared sufficiently. I appreciate that this is an area that is below, it's a low-lying area below uh, Joe's Hill and that whole area and the water just comes down. But I am not sure that the drains are properly cleared. I am not sure that people are given, but they're given the notice because we all see the notice of flooding we knew since, since Saturday. But I am nothing short of embarrassed that nothing, nothing can be done to help these business people. And the sad part is that the insurance companies, I am told, are now saying that this is a low-lying flooding area, and so they are reluctant to support them with insurance. So we have to find some way to support these people as members of the House of Assembly. Meanwhile, Honorable Melvin M. Turnbull, 2nd District Representative, when contacted, stated that he was off island and was scheduled to return that afternoon. However, he left this comment based on his evaluation from photos and videos from his district. I've received pictures and videos throughout the district from Just Van Dyke, Tortola, Windy Hill, King Island, Bay, Bruce Bay. Um, where there have been a number of walls that have fallen down, a number of hillsides that have eroded, a number of guts that are caused flooded in schools. Ivan Dawson School is flooded out. Um, and some other areas, people's homes are being affected. Spooners continues to face their challenges because the roadways are not paved and it is causing additional costs to keep grading up the road when the road, when the rain just erodes. Um, the works that are done. So the people on Just Van Dyke, um, there's a couple areas that, that the roadways are blocked that we have to wait to get it assessed and then get the machinery to clean it out, as well as down in Mount Healthy and going over to the Windy Hill where that uh, wall has collapsed. Minister for Communications and Works, Honorable Kai Raima, also on the ground, spoke on the damage assessed at the time. Uh, well, it's clean up now. Um, we have the people for the fire out who will be washing down the street after um, doing some clean up and moving some of the mud that we'll see that is happening right here. Um, another unfortunate situation, and uh, we sympathize with the, the business owners in the area. Uh, we've had quite a lot of rain in the last few hours, and you know, this is a result of it. And you know, I can't say that. Some rain wouldn't be taken on the, the guts not being properly cleared, but we've been having quite a lot of rain in the last few weeks. And you know, this is this is the result of it here today. Premier and Minister of Finance, Dr. The Honorable Natalia Wheatley, presented the BVI's 2025 budget in the House of Assembly on Monday, unveiling a projected revenue collection of over $407 million for the upcoming fiscal year. Premier Wheatley detailed the sources of the revenue, with the majority estimated to be over $379 million coming from taxes. Of this amount, $379,889,678 
will be received from taxes, including payroll taxes, property tax, taxes on goods and services, taxes on international trade, 25510245 dollars will be collected in other revenues, including property income, sales of goods and services and other fees, and $2,532,000 from grants. According to Premier Wheatley, the budget represents a nearly $100 million increase in revenue compared to 2015, reflecting resilience and growth in the BVI's economy, despite natural disasters, global pandemics, and political challenges. To put our projected revenues in context, in 2015, we were projected to collect $311,136,000. In 2025, we are projected to collect nearly $100 million more than we did in 2015. This is evidence that our economy has continued to produce even after natural disasters, global pandemics, and political shocks. From the total revenue, approximately $5.88 million will be allocated to various special funds aimed at enhancing environmental protection, tourism, and transportation infrastructure. From the total revenue, we will contribute $2,897,367 to the Environmental Protection and Tourism Improvement Fund. $1,690,400 to the Miscellaneous Purposes Fund, and $1,290,005 to the Transportation Network Improvement Fund, for a total fund contribution of $5,877,771. Premier Wheatley also announced that a significant portion of the budget will go towards recurrent expenditure, ensuring the operation of public services and administration. He also highlighted the capital expenditure allocations. Madam Speaker, on the capital expenditure side, we have allocated $52,500,200 to fund development projects and $8,188,800 to fund capital acquisitions. Meanwhile, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force has issued a wanted bulletin for two men in connection with the shooting and attempted murder of 21-year-old Kazari Stout on Friday, November 8, 2024. Stout, who was shot in Longbush, Tortola, underwent surgery at the Dr. Diolando Smith Hospital and is currently reported to be in stable condition. The two individuals wanted for questioning in the case are identified as 18-year-old Keishon Martin and 22-year-old Shemoy Carey, also known by his alias Fat Cat. Both men are considered armed and dangerous, and the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force has advised the public not to approach them if seen. Persons with any information regarding the whereabouts of Kerry or Martin are kindly asked to contact the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Criminal Investigation Department at 368-5323. That's 368-5323. A subsequent media release from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force also warned about a new, dangerous gang known as the Money Boys, now wreaking havoc across Tortola. Composed of approximately 25 young men aged 17 to 25. And viewers, with that, we take a quick word from our sponsors. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Attention Anagata residents! Attention Anagata residents! CCT is coming to you! That's right! CCT will be visiting Anagata every third Wednesday of the month. Need to pay your bill? Sign up for a new service? Or have a customer service concern? CCT has got you covered! No need to leave the island. CCT is here to make staying connected easier than ever. Mark your calendars for every third Wednesday starting October 16th and visit us for all your CCT service needs. For more information, call us at 444-4444 or follow us on any of our social media pages. See you soon, Anagata. 
at Partners for Kids, your child's health and happiness are at the heart of everything we do. We've been the trusted medical home for children and adolescents up to 18 years old. And now we are excited to welcome a new member to our family of healthcare professionals. Introducing Dr. Aisha Maxwell, our new family practitioner. Dr. Maxwell brings a wealth of experience and deep passion for pediatric and adult care, ready to join our team in providing first-rate health services to your family. At Partners for Kids, we believe in a collaborative approach to healthcare. With partners in physical therapy, occupational therapy, and clinical psychology, Partners for Kids, where caring is just the beginning. Visit us at Road Reef Plaza Tortola, open Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call us at 284-444-5437 or reach out at info at partnersforkids.com to learn more. or visit a CCT store to find out more and bring it home. More locations coming soon. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. During our extensive coverage of the recently concluded BVI Lit Fest, I had the opportunity to speak with Joel Zan Fevic, a dynamic artist from Trinidad and Tobago, who was featured as a presenter at this year's event. Here's a look at that discussion. Hey to it for it is Jaco Wooding coming to you from Brandy Wine Bay Estate Restaurant where I have the absolute pleasure to be seated here with Zan on the heels, may I say, of your extraordinary seminar earlier today. How did that feel? What was the energy like? And of course I have to add, how are you loving Tortola? I've always loved Tortola. I told all my friends about here. Many years ago, I came here with Marsha Montano and the um, AG family, and we had an amazing time together. I'm coming back here to the the, live, the, the uh, writing festival, and it was an amazing experience today to talk about songwriting and how it connects to the Caribbean and the diaspora of entertainment. All right. Now, just before we started recording, we did speak a bit about the importance of literacy in even music. Um, how has that message resonated with you? The BVI Live Festival, it resonated in my heart and it will echo for eternity. And it is because it is a platform for writers like myself, creatives on the whole. It is the exposure of introverts. I believe that the rest of the Caribbean should be heavily involved in this and let us make this something that we all celebrate. All right. Now, not only did you spend the Lit Fest in the BVI, but you also spent your birthday. Um, we yeah, got, yeah, to, we yeah, got yeah. to sing happy birthday to you, you know? Everyone sang happy birthday to me at the festival. The welcome party was amazing. The food was amazing. The host of the house, she is amazing, and her husband. I, 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 will, I will remember this for a very long time. And to be honest, I told my manager that I have never flown for my birthday. I've been touring for like the, the past 15 years of my life, and I've never flown on my birthday. So I was in the, on a plane, you know, on the way here, and um, I, I, I just expanded my arms to the opportunity of the future, and it was an amazing experience. All right, now clearly you're loving your time here. We have to ask for the public to know, you know, has the BVI been inspiring to you? Can we maybe expect the BVI to influence a future track? You clearly love it here. Oh, we just had a conversation. I just told you I want to come to the BVI. I have amazing looking women and the, the environment is so romantic. I would like to shoot some of my music videos across here. So I'm expanding this, y'all. Let's get together on Zan Music TT and make this happen because this carnival 2025 that is approaching, I intend to do a lot, a lot of work representing for the 18 band. My name is Zan, thanks for having me. 
<laughs> and thank you so much for staying with us for this quick interview. We're going to continue to bring you more from the BVI Lit Fest. Of course, Twit for Media is your place to stay for great content. Meanwhile, Jermaine Henry of Alpha Fitness VI has made history for the British Virgin Islands, earning his professional bodybuilding card after an impressive performance at the 2024 NPC Worldwide Caribbean Grand Prix in the Bahamas. That was the pro qualifier segment held on Sunday. More in this report. Competing in the super heavyweight category, Jermaine Henry bested his competition to win the title, then went on to secure the overall Mr. Caribbean Grand Prix crown, earning him his coveted International Fitness and Bodybuilding Federation professional card. Henry's remarkable win, which he achieved against the champions of other weight categories, solidified his status as one of the top bodybuilders in the Caribbean. Speaking to Twit for Media, Henry described this achievement as the culmination of a goal he had pursued since 2016, comparing the prestigious pro card to an NBA draft, marking his entry into the elite ranks of bodybuilding. It takes you to the next level. This is where like you get drafts for the NBA yes. or the NFL, you know, you get drafts because Olympia is the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. Right. And you have to be a professional bodybuilder to get there. Yes. So you might see the physique I had and you were like, oh, you know, I thought you were a pro already. No, that was just a, that you would be surprised that was just an amateur physique because you have to win that amateur show. Yeah. To become that professional and there's so much people going in for it. So a pro card is basically uh, like you get draft for the NBA. With his new IFBB pro card, Henry's next objective is even more ambitious. The Mr. Olympia competition, the pinnacle event in the bodybuilding world. However, he acknowledged that the road to Olympia will require him to compete in numerous pro events to establish his credentials and refine his form. My plan is to get to, you know, I could just um, say that in the voice note, mm. um, where the Olympia is the Super Bowl, the Olympia is the Olympics mm. of bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. That's where we're heading. Mm -hmm. That's where we're heading. But in the meantime, we have to go to other shows. You have to go to other pro shows and win them. Mm. So you have to win once, you can get qualified mm. for the Olympia. So we have to work because people, Listen to me, every year people are fighting in those pro shows because everybody wants to step on that Olympia stage. Everybody want to get to the top. Everybody wants to get up there. So, yes, it's not no, okay, I'm just going to just um, mope around and, you know, slack off on my training or anything like that. There's no slacking off on anything right now. It's just hard hammering work, you know all emotions aside and do what we have to do. Henry expressed gratitude to his wife Shakima Baptiste Henry for her unwavering support and motivation throughout his journey. According to Henry, she has been his constant encourager, driving him to continue pushing towards his goals even when the journey was difficult. And I have this amazing woman behind me, well beside me. Not behind me, beside me. She's in the background, yes. <laughs> but she's beside me. I have this amazing woman who, listen to me, everything people see on the front, trust me, that engine in the hood, which is her, is running over time. For me, this beauty of a shell show, um, showcase itself all over. Trust me. She's working so. I have no doubt that I'm going to go very far with this amazing woman. Because I believe in you. Beside me, pushing me. But this milestone for Henry not only raises the bar for fitness in the BVI, but also puts the territory on the international bodybuilding map. Reporting for 284 News, I am Kamal Haynes. And viewers, with that, we take a quick break to hear from our sponsors, but stay with us because there is more when we return. Orange alert! Orange alert! Fire is spreading across the BVI! The fastest, most reliable, and affordable fiber internet service is here for you! Look out for fire 
in these new locations. Slady, Duff Bottom, Manual Reef, Sea Cows Bay, Albion, Hannah's, Palestina, Pleasant Valley, and Havers. Fiber is in your area. Call 444-4444 or visit a CCT store to find out more and bring it home. More locations coming soon. At home or on the go, watch CCT Live. Download our app and carry your favorite TV shows, news, or live sports anywhere you go. Visit cctbvi.com forward slash live. Select your package and tune in. Attention, Anagata residents. Attention, Anagata residents. CCT is coming to you. That's right. CCT will be visiting Anagata every third Wednesday of the month. Need to pay your bill? Sign up for a new service? Or have a customer service concern? CCT has got you covered. No need to leave the island. CCT is here to make staying connected easier than ever. Mark your calendars for every third Wednesday starting October 16th. And visit us for all your CCT service needs. For more information, call us at 444-4444 or follow us on any of our social media pages. See you soon, Anagata. At Hire BVI, we're not just about business. We're about empowering lives. And that is because we aspire to inspire. By choosing us, you're supporting a company that believes in equal opportunities, diversity, and community growth. Our mission goes beyond profit. It's about providing HR solutions, fostering talent, and leaving a positive impact. Join us in building a better future, a better BVI. Choose Hire BVI, where your support isn't just a transaction, it's a transformation. Together, we're changing lives in these beautiful Virgin Islands. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. The British Virgin Islands celebrated a return to the OECS Swimming Championships as Kyla Porter secured the team's sole medal in a thrilling performance on Sunday. Competing to the girls' 11 and 12 50-meter butterfly, Porter took the silver with a time of 32.16 seconds. Here's a look at that race. Play spot lane two, Anaya George. As we move into the deciding heat, the fastest seeded heat in the girls' 11 12 50-meter butterfly. In lane number one, we have Amara Reese of St. Lucia. In lane number two, Belle Adams from St. Vincent and Grenadines. In lane three, Kyla Potter of BVI. In lane number four, Kezia Joseph of Antigua and Barbuda. Lane five has Anya DeGaines of Antigua and Barbuda. In lane six, St. Lucia's Zena Brathwaite. Belle Adams here in lane two with a slight lead. Lane number three is very close. Cool. Lane number BBI. five, Anya De Gaines is also closing well. It's going to be a close one to Looks call. Like it's Anya. Anya. Anya takes it 32.11. In a time of 32.11. Followed by BVI's Kyla. Kyla. And then Bell in that third day spot. The championships held in St. Vincent and the Grenadines were the BVI's first appearance since 2016. The team comprised six young athletes, each showing remarkable promise in their debut performances. The championships were won by Antigua and Barbuda for the third consecutive year with 1,419 points, while Grenada placed second overall and St. Vincent and the Grenadines took third place. Also in the world of sports, Virgin Gorda United continued their flawless start to the 2024-2025 BVI Football Association National Football League season, storming to a 5-0 victory over rival Sugar Boys FC last Sunday at the Virgin Gorda Recreation Ground. More in this report. Virgin Gorda United's offense was relentless, 
securing all five goals in a stunning first half display. Jaden Kwashi led the charge with goals in the 12th and 25th minutes, while teammates Jaden Abrams, Aikaijal Williams, and Kijon Nemblit added to the tally, scoring in the 30th, 39th, and in the second minute of stoppage time. The dominant win puts VG United at four wins from four games. In other matches, Old Madrid pulled off a thrilling comeback against Avengers in the first Sunday game. Despite Despite being down 1 2, Old Madrid surged ahead to a 3 2 victory with late goals from Richard Welcome in the 72nd and 87th minutes. Ramon Young opened the scoring for Old Madrid before Jesus Tavar netted twice for Avengers, briefly giving them the lead in the 70th minute. Meanwhile, over on Tortola at the Greenland Football Stadium, Lionheart FC managed a dramatic 2 2 draw with Islanders FC thanks to Tyron Buddha's stoppage time goal. Buddha initially opened the scoring in the 56th minute, but Islanders quickly responded with an equalizer from Rogel Noel three minutes later. Antonio Rodney's penalty in the 90th minute seemed to secure the win for Islanders, but Buddha struck again in the final moments, leveling the game and securing a hard-fought point for Lionheart. Here's a look at those highlights. 24. As number 10, Buddha, take a shot. We know what he came from. Love. Oh my goodness, it's in the back of the net. It's a goal. Wall help him and the islanders as paddy were heading to his left and to get around makanaki they can't do so but been pushed back see what is the in attendance at the end of it and going back to shama number 19 for the islanders islanders pushed out fine Sha uh, junior harris sheldon going around his player get it across so he's there it's a goal and a nice ball here from Sheldon. Milk with ball in hand, sending a long one down, trying to find Shara. So a monitoring down, doubling his ear once more. Oh my goodness, this one's going to be problems. Trouble. Pull him down inside the box, this doubling. And it's going to be a penalty, says Joy. Knocked it inside the back of the net, and it's a goal. So Islanders goes up two. Goal to one. Feel and send a long ball up once more. Hold it up. It's not going to be trouble. Makanaki is there. Problems. Problems for. Oh my goodness. It's in the back of the net. It's a goal. In the second game of the Tortola doubleheader, will use Cruz past Rebels with a decisive 6-2 victory. Goals came from Abner Guevara, Leo Fort, Hugo Lizziario, Alexander Edwards, Alejandro Sanchez, and Marcus Robinson. Rebels managed two goals through Irvin Lockhart and Sheldon Tony, but couldn't keep up with will use potent offense. Turning down, number six. Still going down. Have one man to be turned and turned and looked up. Get inside to number seven. Number seven between two players. Push the cross. Find number six. Number six. Oh my goodness. Good defensive play. A shot comes in. It's in the back of the net. It's a goal. The keeper just watch this one go by. Ball back in the net. Good move. The cross to the defender on the right. Looked up. Realized two men in convert. Pushed inside. Find number six. Number six. Tapped it out nicely. Find his player nicely. As Wallace building up once more. There you go. Here you go. Tapped it out. Find Marcos. Marcos down the flank once more. This is a big problem. Trouble. Keeper comes off. He's standing inside. Go! Wallows building up nicely. The cross once more. Nice ball inside. Power up there by the keeper. Not too far. Hugo is the end of it. Tuck it back inside. It's in the back of the net once more. It's a goal. As we are getting deep inside this first half. Ball comes across. Let's see who is the end of it. Shot comes in. It's in the back of the net. It's a goal. Good shot there. Oh my goodness. The rebel is on the scoring sheet. Outstretched to the left, stretching as the ball going to the far post, into the back of the net. So the ball will add, add into the tally, and it's four goals to one. And it's inside, let's see. Defender. Not too fast! Oh my goodness, it's in the back of the net, watch out! Once more, here we go. Pushing it out, trying to find Marcus. Marcus on the right, taking it into the box. Marcus. Marcus trying to get around one player. Do so nice. The shot comes in. He sends the back of the net from the near post. Meanwhile, Saturday's action at Greenland saw Positive FC also salvage a point with a stoppage time equalizer. Damien Bent's late goal in injury time secured a 1 1 draw against One Love United, who had initially taken the lead through Zeron Samuel in the fifth minute. Oh, my God. 
But as the league heats up, VG United remains the team to beat with impressive performances across the board, showcasing the high stakes and fierce competition in the BVI football season. Reporting for 284 News, I am Kamal Haynes. Games continue this weekend with action both at the Bujangoda Recreational Ground and the Greenland Football Stadium on Saturday and Sunday. Live coverage will be available on CCT Live Channel 284 of the games between Lionheart FC and Rebels FC on Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday from 6 p.m. with Islanders versus VG United at 8.15 p.m. with Madrid, with Old Madrid, I should say, against One Love United. And viewers, that's it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com. Join our WhatsApp channel for which there should be a QR code on your screen. Like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram, Threads, and X, formerly Twitter. I'm Jaco Wooding, and I'm hoping you have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Goodbye.